Don't to subscribe. <laughs>great little spot to do some DG today's topic is what are the three nationalities or countries of Asian women that you should not date or even really get involved with at all now I'm going to talk about them as nationalities countries uh, because most countries in Asia are still representative of one race within the country uh, it's not very diverse uh, same religion generally uh, most countries in Asia if you just go to the the, uh, the country you will expect to see a particular race and that hasn't changed because immigration hasn't really hit Asia yet and most countries in Asia are overpopulated so I'm really just gonna name three types of girls that you should avoid dating uh, in my opinion the worst types of Asian girls to date sure you can have a one night stand or whatever with any girl in Asia uh, but I'm going to make it a lot easier for you guys to just if you're gonna go on a trip to Asia or you're gonna find yourself a girl from one of these countries uh, these are three to avoid or be very careful with and on top of that I'm going to categorize them really in, in two parts really their attractiveness and the cultural reasons why you shouldn't date them so these Three countries are in no order at all, so don't think that they're in any specific order, they're, they're not. Uh, one, there's three countries, let's start with number one. Number one is South Korea. Uh, South Korean girls, uh, in my opinion, you should avoid dating or getting involved in, in any way, shape or form. If you're thinking that uh, K-pop is a representative of what uh, Korean girls look like, uh, Google uh, plastic surgery in South Korea also understand that they are heavily influenced by the United States uh, just because Google promotes K-pop doesn't mean they're the most beautiful or the most talented uh, it's a geopolitical thing more than anything an economic thing that the United States is promoting uh, most Korean girls uh, Korea in general is a very racist country a xenophobic country they don't like foreigners and that is uh, basically because they're the Ukraine of Asia. They've been squashed and invaded so many times by the Chinese from one end or the Japanese on the other end. Uh, they have a good reason to be xenophobic and it's built into their culture. So culturally, uh, you're going to deal with a lot of girls that have a background or a family that just won't like you. Uh, you're going to deal with a lot of racism if you have to deal with them if you're a foreigner. Even if you are an Asian from China or Japan, you're going to have trouble in South Korea. Culturally, they are also very feminist. Uh, a, a lot of Korean women uh, have this, uh, what is it, entitlement inherited from the United States. Every country that is connected to the United States and has got rich of trading with the United States has entitled women like this. Um, and there's, there's a few other cultural problems as well. You're not going to understand their culture. It's a very complex culture and it'll take you a long time to understand it. It's just not worth your time dating them culturally. Secondly, uh, plastic surgery, they're actually not that attractive. To, and that, this might seem like a controversial thing to say, but generally, South Korean girls are the most overweight in Asia. Uh, Japanese girls are thinner. Uh, Chinese girls are thinner. Uh, every other every other uh, country in Asia has thinner girls and I think that could be partially because of the United, United States influence and so much fast food and awful awful uh, unhealthy processed foods that have gone into South Korea uh, but also genetically girls that eat well you can also notice that they have really chunky legs on average you might see a, a tall beautiful Korean girl but She's often accompanied with a girl who is generally overweight. Uh, also, they have their, their facial structure, their head, they're very square when you compare them to other uh, women in Asia. 
uh, in my opinion, they're probably one of the least attractive nations there. Uh, recently, uh, uh, you can Google this as well, you can search it up. Uh, a Korean man married a beautiful Korean girl and they had children and the children were extremely ugly, so ugly that he sued his wife because he didn't realize that his wife had so much plastic surgery. His children came out so ugly and he didn't realize that and he sued her for pretty much de de uh, deceiving him into marrying her and having kids and now his kids are ugly and he was so angry about it that he sued her. So there's lots of evidence of Korean men sick of uh, getting out and riding in public, they're, they're voting in politicians that are anti-feminism uh, in South Korea. There's a lot of uh, problems in South Korea due to the female population and I would recommend that you avoid South Korean women altogether no matter where you meet them in the world. And that doesn't mean that you can't find a good one, but on average you are going to have a lot of trouble finding a good one. So South Korea won. Avoid at all costs. Let's work our way down the map of Asia too. The second country that you should avoid are Thai girls. Now, a lot of you guys travel to Thailand and Bangkok. I had to put this in the list. Now, a lot of Thai girls, uh, they are culturally Chinese, but they have all these uh, xenophobic problems as well, geopolitically. You'll notice that they use line. Um, Line is a Japanese app while being on the border of China. Uh, they have a lot of uh, political strife in the country as well. Uh, and they are very xenophobic. Uh, you might not actually realize that when you go to the country because you might go to Bangkok and hang out in the Farang areas where the Farangs, uh, the women over there, just want your money. Uh, but if you get into a serious relationship, you're going to have a lot of trouble. There we go. I don't know what that thing is. Um, Thai girls are generally quite nice. And uh, they're very friendly. I will admit that. They're extremely agreeable. They're extremely feminine. Uh, but culturally, there's a thing called a kick or a nip or something. I can't, I can't actually explain what a kick or kip. I can't say it in, in Thai, but um, it's, it's the, the basic premise of what a, uh, culturally in Thailand, they will have a guy that they're in love with who is more their age, and then they will date or even marry a guy who is uh, the provider. So culturally, quite often, and, and this is hidden most of the time unless you actually dig deep into the culture in Thailand, is that they have two men, always. They have the man that they love, and they have the man that provides for them and spends everything on them. The man that spends everything on them, his money is diverted through to the man that they actually love. She will be sleeping with both of them all the time, and she'll never very rarely be uh, uh, monogamous. So monogamy isn't really in the Thai culture, and this is probably why so many Westerners go there, get laid, think that they're winning, when in fact they're coming over there as the provider for their real boyfriend that they really love. Uh, this also feeds into STDs and all these other issues, but generally, uh, if you are dating a uh, Thai girl in... Uh, <laughs> oh no, she was covering her face from the, the sun. Not me, she's still covering her face. <laughs> I was like, this camera's everywhere, why are you worried about this camera? So, culturally, you're gonna struggle to find a monogamous uh, Thai girl. And they're very sneaky, and their high, their high intelligence means that they are more likely to outsmart you. Uh, we have a lot of Thais that come to Australia, and uh, they will marry men that are very old, just to get citizenship and get out of the country. Uh, uh, that is starting, that is still kind of the same today uh, and uh, quite often there's, there's so many stories, hundreds or more that I've heard in my lifetime of uh, Thai girls marrying an Australian guy and then bringing their real boyfriend over a decade after marrying and divorcing an Australian man. Very common and so you are going to struggle to find a monogamous one as it is. So pair bonding is a big issue with Thai girls culturally. Uh, also, they don't really speak English that well. 
uh, massive cultural differences, you're going to struggle unless you maybe learn Thai. And then the problem, the same as with uh, South Korean girls, is that uh, you will also be battling to date uh, higher quality Thai girls. Uh, the highest quality Thai girls prefer Thai guys, the same as South Korean girls. Uh, if you come across a Thai girl that prefers white guys, that's only because you are the second best. You are the, her second or third or fourth option. And also, a lot of you guys are old that go to Bangkok and Thailand and date Thai girls. You are probably their last option and they've run out of options altogether because Thai guys don't want them. Or they're dating you and you're just the provider for the guy that they really love. This is kind of the same, but a little bit different in South Korea because the South Koreans, you see, they're just xenophobic. They've got the money. They don't need your money. And so you're going to, uh, the highest quality South Korean girls go with South Korean guys. Only the leftover girls or the girls that have run out of options and they're like, oh, I better go with a filthy foreigner. Uh, if you go online and have a look and translate things, you will understand how they really feel. There's a reason why Farangs are frowned upon in Thailand and if you go to country towns uh, you mess around you might get messed with in Thailand and in South Korea so Thai culturally is yeah the other aspect is uh, Thai girls are quite cute don't get me wrong they're actually quite cute but you will notice that as I said the 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 more beautiful Thai girls they're gonna go with Thai guys and that's based on uh, the tone of their skin. I know a lot of people have said this a million times online Darker skin kind of uh, represents your socio-economic status or your class within the country If you have darker skin, then you're more likely to be a farm girl uh, But that is still somewhat uh, true today and That girl if she could get herself a high quality Thai girl would choose him every time over you uh, Keep in mind you're a foreigner it's a lot more risky to mess with a foreigner. Uh, foreigners come in, they're, they're less likely to commit to a Thai girl, and, and when they do, um, when they when they do, quite often, the, the girl ends up left alone. The Thai guy lives there, um, and is Thai, and understands the culture. And um, so, generally, it depends on what you like, and preferences are, it's up to you guys. Uh, I would much prefer the I'm more attracted personally to the Thai girls that the Thai guys want. So uh, when I went to Bangkok, uh, I had uh, dates with those girls that the, uh, that the Thai guys want and I missed out on a lot of opportunities over there, it was very difficult. But I had a lot of opportunities for the girls that the Thai, the Thai guys don't want um, because, well, no one really wants them. Um, and I, I met quite a few uh, Thai girls that were like, oh, Dave, you're really handsome. I was like, really? And they, these are, this isn't just like hookers or whores or anything. These, these were girls that were normal girls. But I looked at them and I'm like, I'm in my 40s. I'm a little bit pudgy. I'm a little bit old. The fact that she thinks I'm attractive also says a lot about her. <laughs> because I'm not. I'm short. I'm a, little bit, I'm a little bit older. I'm a little bit pudgy. I'm not a tall, good-looking, attractive uh, Australian man. And so therefore, if they're attracted to me, they must be, you know, uh, without building rapport, of course. And that's where game comes in. That's a topic for another day. But if you can build rapport, then obviously you can overcome your attractiveness issues. South Korean girls avoid like the plague. Thai girls also avoid like the plague. Number, and, and, and number three, the final one, the other destination that you guys like to travel to is the Philippines. Now, <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say it straight out that there is a, a lot of that South American fieriness in the uh, the Filipinos. They're very fiery, and in some parts of the Philippines, I've heard of uh, people being robbed and killed and awful things happening. Obviously, nowhere near as dangerous as. Uh, South America but they do have that Spanish blood in them they have a touch of that in them now Filipino girls they do like foreigners 
but a lot of it is connected to the fact that they would like to get their hands on your money. Uh, culturally, they are Christian or Catholic and generally very conservative. The funny thing is, a lot of men go there and they have a lot of success with a lot of local Filipino girls and they think that that is representative of the entire population. But it's not because they, their sample size are the girls that nobody really wants. These are girls with no other options and they're happy to take anything. Now, culturally, they are very sneaky. Um, a lot of the times Filipino girls will steal from you. A lot of the times they will lie to you. They're very deceitful people generally. Uh, I've dated quite a few Filipinos, the same way I've dated Thais and the same way I've dated South Koreans. Filipino girls, in my opinion, cannot be trusted and let me explain one story. I remember when I was younger, I had some work colleagues and there were these women from the Philippines working at my company. Now, one day they had a celebration and these Filipino girls, uh, they were in their, say, 40s? 30s or 40s around that that mark and when they like about 20 years ago they married an Australian man an older Australian man probably 30 years older than them and and the girls in her late 30s or early 40s and he's 70 and he just died and all the Filipino girls were having a celebration and I was like what's up what's with the celebration they're like oh we're celebrating her husband dying now she pretended for 20 years or more to love him. The Filipino girl lied, cheated and stealed and pretended and faked love for him and was not going to leave him until he died. Stayed with him the entire time. And then he's sick in hospital. And actually, sorry, I gotta correct it. Dying. Didn't die but was dying. They knew that it was terminal and he only had days left. He went into hospital and uh, they were told that he was going to die. He only had days left. Instead of supporting her husband that she'd been with for 20 years and he obviously believed that they were still in love, the moment that he became terminally ill and went in the hospital and was dying, she abandoned him right at the very end and didn't visit him in hospital and allowed him to die in the hospital alone just waiting for him to die now that is next level deceit and on top of that I actually confronted her about that I said that is that's quite disgusting what the hell and a bunch of other Filipino ladies they all jumped in and defended her and said she this advice is something that I would keep man. for my students she and clients and like, probably not okay to We're be putting it on YouTube. So, if you're looking for true love and you, and you date or marry a Filipino girl, I know Dave Chappelle's married one, might be different, maybe her background is Filipino, but the culture right in the center of the Philippines there's only really one way to make this happen and, and have a higher probability of success is that you go and live in the Philippines full time uh, and don't bring her to your country. You go and live there full time yourself, have kids over there and have her always fear that you're going to leave her. Unfortunately, a lot of aspects of life is leverage and power, always. Uh, sure. Some girls are going to fall in love with you, but a lot of those girls, they need to be virgins, be able to pair bond, and uh, not have a lot of experience and a large body count. A lot of the guys that go to the Philippines, they don't realize that almost all the girls that they're dating and meeting up with have large body counts and uh, are struggling, will, will struggle or will find it impossible to pair, bo pair bond with you, and they'll lie, cheat, and steal their way into getting their hands on your assets. <laughs> So the Filipinos, from my experience, and, and keep in mind, I've got a lot of good Filipino friends. One of my oldest friends for about 20 years is from the Philippines. Uh, we've discussed this. Uh, he's explained to me in depth 
what it's like over there and I've traveled there once myself I spent a month over there last year I gotta say that they just assume that you're unfaithful <laughs> and they're not faithful to you uh, a large percentage of them so Filipinos uh, culturally they're it's a very conservative country yet they um, they seem to sleep around with a lot of foreigners why is that because it's deceit it's deception on top of that uh, attractiveness wise uh, the Filipino girls I would rate them quite low low um, uh, generally Filipinos are maybe it's the food over there I struggled to find any decent food in the Philippines um, I started feeling sick a few weeks in because I couldn't find any decent good food unless you spend higher amount like more expensive than uh, in Australia just for good clean whole whole foods and, and that would have been um, imported as well Filipinos are generally a lot smaller um, they, they've got that Spanish darker skin sort of feel to them um, and the other aspect is uh, generally they're not as voluptuous as uh, other Asian nations uh, you know you will find a, a, a Filipino girl that that you know has a large chest but they're not as common as other countries in Asia on average they're probably as flat chested as probably the uh, well the South Koreans as well as the um, uh, the Thais as well uh, you know maybe you'll get luckier with the Thais maybe maybe slightly uh, but maybe it is the food maybe it's their how, how they're maybe it's malnutrition I don't know maybe it's the environment I don't know but uh, I've noticed that it is a little bit harder to find a taller leggy attractive um, uh, Filipino girl that um, uh, is, isn't kind of looks like a boy and so when you have a look around uh, so, so basically they're the three countries that I would say are probably the least attractive in a little bit of depth I can go in a lot more depth probably spend an hour on each of these three countries uh, but when you when you mix culturally and their attractiveness level uh, South Koreans um, you know the Thais and the Filipinos they rank right at the very bottom in my opinion on uh, not only attractiveness level but culturally and the fact that you by avoiding these three nations not only for travel but if you come across a girl from one of these countries I, I recommend you not only avoid them if you do you will save yourself on average that doesn't mean that you can't get lucky and find a good one but on average you will struggle to find uh, a really good one in these countries and so by watching this video I would have saved you a lot of not only money time effort your life but heartbreak um, and possibility of like that man that I the story that I told you about that man who, who dated a Filipino married a Filipino girl and died in hospital alone you don't want to be in that situation you want to find a girl that's more likely to pair bond with you have some culture that respects men uh, uh, a girl that's more likely to fall in love and you can get all that fuzzy feelings of real true love with a good girl I would avoid these three nations totally like totally I do have three nations that are right up in the top three uh, but you have to go to my channel to check out I'll make another video on the, the top three Asian nations, the uh, top three Asian girls that I recommend that you should date. Um, dating and one night stands are obviously two different things. Uh, but avoid these three girls like the plague. Unless you're gonna travel to Thailand or Philippines or South Korea and go for some one night stands, go knock yourself out, go have some fun. But be careful getting into anything serious with any of them. Anyway, top link in the description, check out the website and uh, get some uh, cold approach coaching with myself. I'll see you guys in the next video.